All right, so I had not intended to see this one as quickly as I did um, for a variety of reasons. One of them, something I already touched on in the you know the abominable uh, review, and that is I'm just kind of sick of Batman and Batman-related things. The Joker being one of them. I'm just very sick of the whole Joker is everything kind of mentality. Um, and also, you know, just various other reasons, but what finally got me out there was a couple of things. Number one, it's amazing how many people were asking me, are you going to see this movie? I don't know why they were all so anxious to hear my take on this one um, versus some of the other ones I've done, but a lot of people ask me, are you going to see this movie? So, you know, it's kind of one of those give the fans what they want kind of thing. Um, the other reason is because this has been a very, uh, very controversial film for a lot of reasons. And, and, you know, it's kind of, I've noticed it's kind of split people right down the middle. You've got the people who are seeing it and going, oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. Just give Joaquin Phoenix the Oscar right now. Matter of fact, let's cancel the Oscars after this movie because nothing else ever deserves an Oscar. This is the greatest film ever. The director of this film saying it's his way of sneaking a real movie, you know, past the, you know, the studio system, whatever the fuck that means. And then you've got the critics on the other side going, hang on a minute. And this kind of, you know, clash between the two. So... As always in life, I have to be the deciding voice. My voice, my decision, will be the one that settles the debate on Joker forever. So what does Brandon think of this movie? Oh, that's unfortunate. I can't say I liked it. I just can't. Um, there's so much going on here that is just wrong. And I don't mean wrong in like, oh, that's so wrong. But it just, it's, it's, it's wrong in that it doesn't work. And half the things I'm hearing everybody going on and on and on about are not, they're not even the point. Um, so let's, let's take this. Let's let's take this and let's let's talk about this because I know this is this is going to be I can feel it this is going to be my uh, a star is born of this year uh, the review that you know people are going to watch just to give a thumbs down to so you know what let's earn those downs folks um, I guess I'll start out by talking about some things that did work this was not a terrible movie by any rate um, it's just not the landmark film that it's been hyped up to be. So, um, I think directorially there's some good directing going on. Um, because when I was into the film, like, the, the few parts where I was like, okay, that's really cool, is when there's, like, no dialogue and, like, the camera is just kind of following... Joaquin Phoenix as he, like, especially whenever he's doing his weird Joker dance, I was like, okay, that's pretty awesome. That's, you know, that looks like the Joker. This looks like a Joker movie to me. Um, so directorially, there are just a lot of really cool shots, a lot of really neat setups that, you know, I think, again, when I was really into it, and there were a few, and I, I'll admit, there were a few moments I was really into it. Um, it was, it was all that. Unfortunately, everything else I was not into. I've heard people go on and on about, you know, Joaquin Phoenix's great acting in this and his perfect acting. And oh my God, just give him the Oscar. Oh, it's such a fucking great movie. His acting is okay. I mean, it seems to me like the majority of his acting in this is just him do, doing a, some combination of a scary voice and a little and a little baby voice you know it sounds like he's trying to do a, a little bit more controlled 
uh, version of the horrible voice James McAvery did in Split, but everybody thought that was brilliant too. Um, he, the best acting he does in this is nothing he says. It's, <laughs> it's the fact that he looks like a fucking psycho. You know, <laughs> it's that he looks scary as hell. You know, that's not really, I'm not going to say that's not acting, because it is, you know, but I'm not, but you know, just because you look like a psycho doesn't mean you're, you know, you're God's gift to the profession. You know, I don't, I don't get where this, I do get where it's, I know, Drew, hang on, baby. I, I do get where it's coming from, because it is coming from a combination of the kind of magnetism he does have when he's not talking, and again, that really good directing and the really good setup of the shots. But anything else? He, he's playing every movie psycho from the last ever. There's nothing original or new here, folks. And I, you know, I hate to do this, but you kind of have to when you're talking about you know a character in a film like this. Compare what he's doing as the Joker here to what Heath Ledger did as the Joker. And I'm sorry, Heath Ledger was at least doing something new and interesting. He Again, he's playing... There were times I thought he was Billy Bob Thornton. You know, they're, they're, you know he's just playing every movie psycho since ever. That's all he's doing here, folks. There's nothing new. But, you know, I could forgive that. But what I have a real problem with with this fucking movie is this conceit and this big rallying cry that everybody's been going on with ever since the first trailer dropped for this movie. And that is that in this version of the, of the Joker origin, it's society that causes him. Society is the person that makes him a monster. And, f and you know what? That's an interesting concept for a Joker movie. They should make one that actually follows through on that sometime. Because that is not what does it in this fucking movie. It's... He's got mental illness. And they they say that from... This is not the story of a, of a guy who is just an everyday schlub, who the world keeps kicking, and he finally snaps. This is a story about a guy who is not right in the head and is sick. They make no bones about the fact that he was in a hospital before this movie started, that he's on God knows how many pills, that he's got thoughts of depression and all this. This is not a thing of society bringing him down. This is a thing of him being sick. And yeah, society sucks, but that's not the real culprit here. Now, if you wanted to make an argument to me that it's how he perceives society, that because of his mental illness, he is perceiving society as always being against him and that building and building, that's an interesting thing to go with. But that's not what they fucking do. They want to have it both ways. That he's mentally ill and that big mean society, the evil 1% made him do it. It's... And I think that's what they were trying to go for at certain points. Because there's this whole thing where he, has, where he sees this girl in his, in, his, uh, in his apartment building in the elevator. And, you know, I'm spoiling things, so be aware. And they go out on dates, and she's talking about, you know, oh, that it's so great that that clown vigilante murdered everybody. You know, I think it's great. Fuck those rich guys. And then it turns out that none of that actually happened. It was all in his head. So I think they were trying to go with a, with a theme of society actually isn't falling apart or isn't just on him. It's how he's perceiving it. But... They clearly dropped that for a more clear, no, it's the rich, it's the evil rich, they did everything. So this movie doesn't even follow through on its own, its own premise. You know, in an era, it's, it's, it's striking to me how fucking tone deaf this movie is. In an era where we're trying to get people to understand mental illness, 
you know, there's all these movements out there to try to get people to be more aware of it and understand how it works and understand warning signs and all this shit. This is a movie that basically says, no, fuck that. You have mental illness. You're a fucking psycho. And, you know, and if you want to go that route, if you want to make that movie, okay, fine. But don't hype it up with this bullshit of we're going to show the evils of society. Because you know, the problem, one of the problems I have with this movie is it's so fucking adolescent. It, it, the director, like I said, has gone on record as a, this is a real movie. It is not a real movie. It is exactly what the Joker is. A adolescent take on getting back at the world that you feel has wronged you. That's why, you know, you know, teen, goth teenagers love the Joker so fucking much. It's so god freaking adolescent in its worldview. It doesn't have the balls to actually be what it's advertised as being. Let me give you an example. So they want to do, according to them, and according to everybody who's talked about it and every meme that I've seen, this is a movie about how society broke this guy. Is it? Let's take the mental illness thing out of it. What society are we looking at? We're looking at the 1%. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree. Too much of the world's wealth is controlled by a very small portion um, that directly controls the lives of the rest of us. I'm not disputing that fact. I am a public school teacher, folks. Believe me, if there's anybody who can get behind the fact that we're not getting paid what we should be getting paid, it's me. All right, but let's be let's be honest with ourselves. Let's just be honest, and I'm not trying to insult anybody's politics here, but let's be fucking honest. Raging against the one percent is such a fucking white person problem. It is. While there are people out there dedicated to raising awareness, just as many of them are there because this is the thing that white, angry teenagers who are just looking for something to scream at can get mad at and feel like they're fucking doing something. Let's be honest. And that's the stance you take for your society did it film. Let me ask you this question and think about this for a second. You want to make a movie about how society drove someone to become a psycho? Why isn't the Joker black? Hmm? Talk about somebody who has a right to rail against society. What if the Joker was a young black man viewing uh, police brutality and all these things that are coming out? And boy, could you do some amazing symbolism stuff with a black man painting his face white to commit horrible crimes. Almost metaphorically saying, look, I'm white now, I can get away with this. Look at that, I came up with a better metaphor like that. Why is it, now people are gonna say I stole this from South Park, but hey, a good idea is a good idea, no matter where it came from. Why isn't the Joker Latino? Huh? Talk about why Why isn't he a person, um, a child of immigrants who's sent to one of those fucking, you know, concentration camps we've got set up. And society really did fail him. Look at that. Or... How about this one? I was really proud of this one because I, I, I just thought of this one while I was watching the movie just as another example, but this one actually fucking really works when you get down to it. Why isn't the Joker gay? Huh? There is a group that really has some issues with society. And then, again, taking kind of a joke concept and making it serious, making the Joker gay makes so much sense. It explains the fanatic obsession he has with Batman. Think about it. People, we have to have Harley Quinn in everything now. Boy, howdy does it add a layer to that relationship that he's a self-hating homosexual who takes up with a, you know, a fetish doll 
basically to prove manliness and and treats her like shit because he really hates her and hates himself for, for the lie he's living. Holy fucking shit. Now that's an interesting concept of the society did it. Better than anything that has that this movie had to offer. No, this movie had to offer the rich people was mean. And again, here's the thing I want to stress about this. If that's the origin you want to come up with the for the Joker, I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with that. What I'm saying is don't go out there and hail your film as this landmark eye-opening, you know, piece of you know, master a master fucking piece. And you're saying, rich people are mean. You know, I'll give you an example. Let's talk James Cameron here. Th a thing I've been railing about for over 20 years. You want to make a, a Hallmark movie and set it on the Titanic? Fine. I've heard of worse ideas, but don't praise it as this gorgeous love story that spans the ages. You want to make dances with wolves, but the, the Native Americans are played by, you know, blue Smurf people. Fine and dandy. No issue with that, but don't give it to me as you're, you're the one enlightening us on, on the evils of colonialism and the, you know, the, the persecution of indigenous peoples. Don't, don't play up like you're fucking, you know, like you're fucking Marty Scorsese. Just don't fucking do it. And that's what was really pissing me off about this movie. This movie could not be more simplistic if it really was plotted by a clown. Okay. And and of course, and the other thing, it, it goes back on its other conceit. The selling point of the other selling point of this movie was that this is a completely this is a, a, a universe devoid of Batman. There's no Batman here. We're just doing a Joker movie. There's no Batman movie. The shit there isn't. Their big twist in this, spoiler alert, just so you know, their big twist in this is that the riot that the Joker sets off is the riot wherein Thomas and Martha Wayne are killed while Batman is stand while Bruce is standing there. And I'm sorry, I hate to nitpick this when there are all these other issues with this fucking movie, but that just, I, that fucking is so stupid. Okay, so we know Batman and the Joker are supposed to be mortal enemies, right? Well, in this film, let's be generous and say that the Joker's in his late 30s. Batman is 12, meaning, you know, by the time he matures to become Batman, let's be generous and say in his 20s, the Joker's already going to be in his 50s. His late 50s at that. <coughs> so Batman is going to be fighting a 50 year old. Does it fucking work? And it goes back on another one of your god freaking selling points for this fucking pompous piece of crap that you're holding up as the be all and end all of comic book movies. We finally made a real comic book movie. Fuck you. I saw a meme. You know what? I'm not even going to get into that. Let's not even fucking get into that. I'm not going to justify someone else's bullshit. Um, look. I can understand why people might like this movie. I can understand it. It is well shot. Joaquin Phoenix does do some interesting things with his face. And some of the shots of the Joker himself are really epic. But, I mean... Substance wise, I'm sorry, folks, there's not a lot there. Or there's not as much as people are making out. It is, it is exactly what, I guess, and I guess that should be praised. It is exactly what a Joker movie should be. It is an adolescent fantasy about getting back at everybody who's mean at you. Not to say that that's not empowering or cathartic to a certain point, but. 
I mean, and I, I hate to bang on this because it's something all the other critics are saying. Do we really, at this stage in time, do we really need a movie that is trying to make us sympathize with the angry loner that goes out and kills people because he feels he's, in, he's entitled to? Just saying. All right. So I'm going to get hate mail on this one. I know. I've heard people talk and just, you know. You know, I say it all the time here on this show. I'll say it again. If you like the movie, then more power to you. You know, I'm not saying don't like what you like. I'm just saying that from my eye, my experiences, my taste, this movie is another... Just another swing and a miss from DC. An interesting concept that they don't have the actual balls to follow through with. Do you know why they didn't make the Joker black, Latino, or gay, or any other uh, variation of an actually oppressed people? Do you know why? Because that would have alienated the fanboys. That would have alienated these people that hold this character up as some kind of god. You know, some kind of rail against the system, rage against the machine god. Because these same people who are going, yeah, smash it down, crush the status quo. If you made the Joker black, Latino, gay, or any other combination, you'd hear nothing but, eh, that's not the Joker. The Joker can't be black. So, this movie is pandering. It is pandering to you. At least from my eye. All right. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. So, final grade for The Joker. Um, I am going to... I don't know where I'm getting this generosity as of late, folks, but I'm getting it. Um, I'm going to say a C- minus for The Joker. Um... Because there, again, I'm being nice because there are some really good, there's some good cinematography, there's some good directing in there, and Joaquin Phoenix does do some interesting things every so often. I, again, I can't lie and say the film never grabbed me. There were some great shots, and there was like, ooh, that, that'd be great in a Batman movie. Ooh, that'd be, you know, yeah, it'd be great in a movie better than this one. But... Of course, you know, I'm going to start stealing a line from Dennis Miller. Of course, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. So, that's my take on the Joker. All right. Well, as of now, I am on fall break. So, I get a week off. Got some plans, so I might go out of town for a little bit with a friend of mine. Um, but I'm also going to try to hit some other films or some other movies out I want to take a look at. So... I hope you'll join me for fall break at the movies, and until next time, drive safe, and I'll see you at the movies.